This next brother actually got his ministry started in the club. Yeah, that's right. You heard me right. The club. He would actually go to nightclubs. He would sign up to get on the open mic for the poetry and spoken word. He would get up, do some pieces that were representing for Christ, and God would show up and wreck the club, like for real. People would end up crying. Some people would come up and want to get prayed for. Some people started a relationship with Jesus right there in the middle of the club. Now, that's not for everybody, but this guy has a unique ministry. It has some powerful, powerful spoken word. So we got to sit down and chop it up with 13th Disciple. So at the age of 23, I found myself downtown in Orlando at the AKA Lounge with a couple of my friends. And I saw spoken word for the first time. And I saw the people do it with so much passion and so much authority, but they weren't using it to glorify God. And so I saw it and I was like, wow, that's amazing, man. Like, I want to do that, but I want to do it for God. And I wanted to use a gift that God gave me, a poetry to be able to draw young people to Christ without preaching to them. So I went home. I started writing and writing and putting some words together that got the Bible along with things that God was giving me. I went back the next Sunday and I signed up on the list at the AKA Lounge downtown Orlando. And when God used me that night, it convicted the hearts of the people in the club. I'm talking about there was girls walking around half dressed and the bar in the back, people getting drunk. And the word came across from a dude, not in a suit and tie and some gaiters, but a dude came in there with a fitted and some saggy pants. And God used me that night to reach those people. And week after week, people would give their life to Christ in the club downtown. And that's how ministry started. And I realized that this was my purpose, to be able to go to the unchurched and reach people in the highways and byways and draw them into the kingdom through spoken word. My latest piece is called The Million Dollar Rap Contract. Where that stems from, as a young dude, 15, 16, I wanted to be so much like Diddy and Mace, man. I mean, I can remember, can't stop, won't stop, you know, wearing the flashy suits and having the girls walking around half naked and having the big old chains and the earrings and just blinging and driving in the cars. And, you know, I wanted to be so much like what I saw and I was striving for that. And my friends and I, we actually had a rap group and we would go around to different talent shows and all these girls would flock towards us and everything. But I would always find myself when we went to record, I could never cuss. I would get on the mic and we would be rhyming and I couldn't cuss and they were just flowing like in cussing and I couldn't do it because the spirit of God on the inside of me wouldn't let me do it. I didn't know God like that, but something on the inside of me would not let me cuss. And so it was, I was just empty. We would go from party to party and I just felt empty, man. And I was striving towards all these things that would never give me true success in him. I was like Solomon. Solomon was striving after this and this and this, trying to find happiness. But he never found it because he was striving after the thing and not the one that provides the things. It's the truth that'll make you free. God, man, man, God, God, our father, wrapped himself in flesh like a mummy, took on the form of man and dwelt among us for 33. Count them 33. Mr. Fantastic stretched out arms, nails, and palms, bore our sins on a tree, innocent but received the death penalty just to stand in the gap for all iniquity. Yea, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and let me in, I will come in and sup with him and he with me, my check, my check, my check, my check, my check, my check, one, two, three, three, and one, one, and three, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, three wrapped in one, the Trinity. But this ain't the matrix. But if you want the truth, take the red pill. Keep the remote locked right where it's at because we'll be back with some live concert footage with 737 and 13th Disciple doing their thing at Sunday Night Vibe.